we're going to have a delay without one drop of rain. <laughs> Fans don't want to, they want to see this played. There is lightning and storm action just so close to Citizens Bank Park that it has not yet begun to rain, but they are putting the tarp on. And here is Jeff Baker grounded into a double play and had an infield single in the second inning. A.J. Ellis going to the mound and the plate umpire Scott Berry apparently was called by Don Mattingly. Now let's wait and see what's going on because Jeff Nelson comes in. Laz Diaz on the foul line at third. He's walking in. The scoreboard in right field is not working at all. And so Mattingly wants to make sure the umpires are well aware of the count, the outs, etc. Up on the scoreboard, we have noticed a discrepancy. It's been unable. And you can see the lower square on the right, zero, 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 the ball and strike. And that can be pretty confusing if you're not keeping an actual counter in your hand. Not much they can do about it. The plate umpire Scott Barry looked over and said OK to Mike Redmond. For the Dodgers more trouble in the scoreboard and now Rick Honeycutt is going to come out and I think what Mattingly wanted to do is make sure when he comes out of the dugout he didn't get on the field. But it was not an, a mound visit. Finally, they're moving around, and Chris Perez will get up in the Dodger bullpen. The Dodgers might also be having a phone problem. Gee, I remember a thousand years ago, it seemed in Forbes Field, they had walkie talkies before they had phones from the dugout to the bullpen, and the Pirates. Had a walkie talkie that was tuned in to the Dodger walkie talkie. And Walter Olson would say, Get so and so up. And then a 30 seconds later, one of the Pirates would say, Get so and so up. And the Dodgers were playing musical chairs in the bullpen. And finally, Mattingly has got it all squared away. Oh, Canada. Well, Toronto's in town and they brought some weather from way north of Canada. It is raining, it's hailing. Dorothy flew by a short while ago. We haven't run that joke in a while. Rockies getting ready for game two against the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. I want to I want to commend Jenny and Sully, by the way, because they were out close enough to the elements that it couldn't have been altogether comfortable. Uh, Boone Logan, Texas kid, he loves the rain. Well, here's what it's looked like the last three hours at Coors Field. First, the rain came, and it really rained, and then it decided to hail. How much hail? How about about an inch? So much so that home plate umpire Las Diaz was making a snowball at one point. But finally, it is cleared up, and Mark Rasm and his crew have done a remarkable job. I've never seen so much water on this field. And now it looks pristine once again and uh, almost three hours later we will have first pitch about two hours and 40 minutes to be exact. Now the home plate umpire Jerry Meals is going out to Marimone. I don't know if he has some jewelry or something else that needs to be attended to. Hmm. I, don't know. I don't see anything. So what is the delay. Wheels wandering out towards second base now, so it has nothing to do with Marimal. He's the crew chief. They're, look, they're second, looking at the back, second base back, aren't they? Carapaza, the second base umpire, out there with middle infielders for the Braves. This is all very curious. Maybe it's oh, the, it's loose. It's loose. It's not sticking. So the uh, the anchor of the base is not holding it properly. There's a spike that comes down from the middle of the base and goes into a hole that is set in the ground that keeps the base from swiveling around that's fitted for that steel piece that comes at the bottom of the bag. So oh. the, uh, what do we got a hammer and what other tool do we have here. Uh, how about some cement. <laughs> well, cement? Cement takes a little while to dry. <laughs> <laughs> and plus the truck doesn't usually fit in that little gate. So what do we got we got a little. Uh, 
call that tool? What's that called? I don't know. No idea. You got any gardeners here? I'm not handy around the house. Well, what they're doing is they're trying to get the sand out of the uh, right. piece that's in the hole. And once they get the sand out of there, then they'll put that steel piece back where it belongs. Well, one thing's for certain is that this ground crew will take care of this problem. And uh, they'll get it fixed. And it won't. A sand claw? Is that what that's No, called? Webby said that. That can't be a sand no. claw. He's making it up. <laughs> sand claw. Sound like something out of uh, Get Smart. Well, it's not quite working yet. Uh, we can play with it. Come on. You can play with it. So a loose base delay here at the bottom of the seventh inning. Keith, do you remember the bags when they were made yes. out of, uh, you know, the like linen or so, whatever remember it was made it, out and of? And they had the straps and we're in Little League, matter. Right. Straps and then they had the, you had the hammer in that kind of. That, that, uh, the metal rod. That's right. That had a like a an a elliptical eye bolt, like an eye. That's right. And, you, and your parents would. Uh, your mom or dad, usually your dad would go out there and nail them all three of them down before the game. So what are we doing here? We're, we're, we're either fixing this or starting a fire with the kindle wood, one or the other. I, oh, I see what I, they're doing. I they're think gonna... this is what you would call a uh, a makeshift solution it's to uh, to it's, a problem. It's called. They're going to make the the hole a little bit tighter with yes. these, these wooden strips. This is called good old fashioned American ingenuity, Gare. <laughs> Well, let's see if it works. It's first. pretty quick thinking if you think about it. I mean, this is a very rare. Now watch, you won't be able to get it in. Oh, look at that. That's Let's not go. shimming as much. That's good enough. Come Sweet on. job. That's great. Now we're going to get another strip of wood. I don't know who brought this up on the Braves, but I'm all over them. Little shimmy there. Let's see. Oh. This is very funny. All right. Good. This was uh, one of the uh, pace of game initiatives that they did not bring up. Uh, that, uh, That's good. Let's play it. They voted on it uh, this winter and said no, that will not work. Come the on, Browns crew is asking Jerry Meals whether that's good enough or whether he wants a longer delay, and Let's I go. think he's uh, opting for good enough. He said it was good enough 15 minutes ago, really. All right, good job, guys. So, that's quick. Uh, that's quick thinking. Yep, got to be able to think outside the box. Or, or inside, inside the box. Inside the box, yeah. <laughs> so. We're into the top of the third inning. We trail it two to one. We had a run in the top of the first. They came right back with two in the bottom of the first. If you're just joining us, and this is after that 12 inning affair last night, Grand Slam home run by Todd Frazier. In the game where she hit two and drove in six. A new career high for him. Sox won that eight to four. So the Sox now. Have beaten Texas the only four games we played them this year and the last two from last season. But the Sox have never swept the Rangers in a sit for the series in their franchise history. Good chance in this one if Mother Nature will take this away. The wind is really whipping up. We saw the boys from the bullpen into the dugout and now. With the mascot retreating, explaining to the ground crew how to do it, nail down that tarp. The rain has started. Welcome back to beautiful U.S. Cellular Field on a very chilly day, and uh, the wind is very much a factor. And earlier, we saw some snow flurries. Hopefully, they will not be hanging around too long, as you see what it looked like a bit earlier at that time. Looked like they might push the game back a bit. But that's not to be. They took the tarp off the field. Johnny Danks warmed up in the bullpen. He seems to be ready to go. And the fans, and there's a lot of them here today, anxious to see baseball, anxious to see their 3 and 1 White Sox take on the Indians. Total bases with 148, doubles with 19, and multi hit games. Still getting the dogs off the field. This is the official end of the dog days of summer. It looks like uh, some stragglers have to be led into their seats. 
And Paul Clemens is just staring out there into the right field corner while they clear the field of dogs. <laughs> Apparently no ground rules are in effect for this. Well. Dogs seem to be rather reluctant to go in the direction in which they're being ushered right now. <laughs> and that never happens with dogs, of course. <laughs> well, let's try this other direction and get this game underway, why don't we? Dog delay in Houston. Is that a dog or is that a, a wolf? I'm not sure what's going on there. We've had very few delays of games since uh, Minute Maid Park opened. This one is a dog delay. There was a brief shower that came over uh, years ago when the roof was open and the tarp actually had to be pulled out over the infield. That's the only time that's ever happened in this ballpark. So a very brief delay for that one. That's the only <laughs> memorable occasion when it comes to a delay in a game in the 13 year history of Minute Maid Park. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll roll. <laughs> So this game's about three minutes late in starting and Paul Clemens goes to work on J.B. Shock. Shock 26 years old from Westerville Ohio. He went to Ohio State. And that's strike one. Been a big roar for the crowd is the it actually started to rain. Fairly hard. Here's Pagan. And these guys are probably 10 years old never seen rain. This 10 year drought man it's wearing everybody out when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and smog experts. So Carlos Contreras the new pitcher for the Reds. And uh, you're going to see another good fastball I mean, he's mid 90s. He will sink and cut the fastball he's got a, a slider and a change up. They're going to pop up into the rain. And Borges will put it away. One out. I mean, the last time we saw this was in 2012 in yeah. the NLCS against the Cardinals, game seven. And it was, it was, well, it was one of the greatest memories yeah, ever. It was Marco Scudero catching the rain in an open mouth. It's I am shocked that our fans even have umbrellas. I thought those were extinct. Paul Emmel, the crew chief. But how about our ball dude? That is Bob Nealis on the third base side. He is prepared. You think Bob puts that in his pocket wherever he goes? Absolutely, he does. That's the only possible way that you could have a slicker in Northern California. <laughs> 